Okay. We're ready? Mm. Oh. Hang on. I don't know if they have that one still in oh. double X. I can get that one shipped to them, though. I think they have the other one. But they say, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, get your... Geeky fucking blinders. <laughs> ah, here I am. Fucking. Ah, you, you look the part now. My ears are really going to sweat now. Peaky <laughs> All right. Okay. Give me the go ahead. Give me thumbs up from everybody when you're ready. You guys ready? Hey. All right. And we're live. With Paranormal Dash Spirits, this is a place we come to get our booze on. We talk about the booze, the things that go bump in the night. And I get to do this with all my favorite booze. I'm Mike Black. My wife, Alyssa Black. Howdy. <laughs> and my best friend, John Burkett. Allo. I believe I said that right. Allo. That <clears throat> means, I know what allo means. That means we are drinking scotch tonight. We are. <laughs> All right. That's and why I'm wearing this silly hat. Why you're, no, <clears throat> the, hat, I, the hat fits you. I think it looks wonderful. I think it's appropriate for What I love scotch. is that your shirt matches the bottle. Mm. Ish. 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 In this light, in our mood lighting, okay. it does. Okay, ish. Well, we're, we're all about... Uh, the Scots and the the uh, the uh, Northern Isles of of Great Britain today because it took John, you a while to get that out there, dear. You know what? <laughs> Anytime you want to take over in this spot, I'm just going to sit over there and, and say my line. Calm so, down. Calm down. <laughs> so we're talking about the Gray Man of Ben McDewey. This is a spooky, scary. Wild story, of, aka the Scottish Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah, the Scottish Bigfoot, and John's going to bring us that story tonight, uh, along with some. Um, I'm going to butcher this name. Brooklodic. You got it. Brick. Brooklodic. Brick lad. Brooklodic. <laughs> Brooklodic. Aren't you Irish? Come on, dude. <laughs> Which is not Scottish. Well, no, it's not, but confusing. it's pretty dang close. No, it's not even. Adjacent. So, any, adjacent. that's my new word. I love that word. It's Scots Gaelic and Irish Gaelic. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, and they're different. So, anyway, let's talk about all the places you can go to uh, to check us out. Uh, we've got Facebook Booze with Benefits. Booze with Benefits for Facebook. Uh, for YouTube, what do we have? Three B Paranormal Spirits. No for, dash. <laughs> no dash. Three B Paranormal Spirits. For our Instagram. MW Black 1966. Good job, babe. As we have not been able to do the Paranormal Spirits. I don't know what that's about, but that's your, yeah, that's your jam. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure it out. So Twitter is the twi same. MW Black 1966. Mm -hmm. Where's your website? Paranormal-spirits.com. Absolutely. And when you get there, you can look up uh, what other website can you connect to? Boozy's to Boutique, B-O-O. -O. To see all our swag. Dash T. <laughs> and where all can you listen to this podcast? Wherever it is that you find your podcasts. And that's true. You Spotify, can... Apple Podcasts, Amazon. Audible. Audible. Amazon Music. Google Podcasts. Basically, wherever you find your podcast. Pretty much. Pretty much. And even on YouTube now, YouTube has a podcast... And you can uh, also watch the video of this on YouTube. On the YouTubes. On 3D the YouTubes. Paranormal yes. Spirits. Absolutely. No dash. So. B double O Z E. <laughs> if you're like me and you like to see the people talking, uh, that's me. Unless I love... you're out walking, but <laughs> when I'm sitting there working, um, <laughs> I love that. I like. To I love watch. the air quotes for. I was at work and I was working. I enjoy a long form video, you know. I oh, like absolutely. Yeah, I, I, so the whole thing about podcasting, I love listening to podcasts, but if I'm driving down the road or if I'm laying in bed at night or something like that, I want a podcast. If I am sitting at work, I want to have my other laptop over here, my personal laptop my podcast running so that I can be working on some spreadsheet or something and look over and go, oh, wow, that's amazing. And then yeah. go back. Yeah. I, so See, I don't, I totally I don't watch it. any podcasts on video. I know I do. 
I do. I open Spotify I on my personal laptop when I watch Rogan mm-hmm. so that I can see the video and hear the, you know. Well, here's the difference. We're, you, we are all, we're very, 2023 around here, you two get to work at home. I drive <laughs> to a cubicle and I work. Well, I sit in a so cubicle. So I can't work. watch it. I guess I could watch it, but At I home. don't. Uh, wait. In my underwear. When Mike and I shared an office. Oh, I know you two probably watch all kinds of stuff. Oh, much. <laughs> much YouTube was That's the difference with your job versus mine. <laughs> right. Y'all's job. No, <laughs> actually, mine. Uh, all eight hours, I am hard at it. Me too. Absolutely. At least eight. Sometimes. Well, I definitely. Not so for the bad. unnamed companies that we used to work for the same company. Now we work for companies that he is a vendor of my company. Mm. Uh, true that. Yeah. And, and I support the uh, stuff that his company sells. That's true. And I <laughs> am over here in the blanket of the healthcare <laughs> as the actual <laughs> nurse. Yeah, you didn't say the that. Mm-mm. I'm, mess, I'm, I'm messing just, with I'm you. I'm blanketing healthcare. <laughs> I'm in a, I'm a nurse. I'm I not gotcha. I'm not spe- specifying, but I don't work in a hospital. I work in a cubicle, so it's a wonderful place to be. Brooklotic. Brooklotic. The classic laddie. The classic laddie. Mm-hmm. Brooklotic. The classic laddie. That S- is that a Isla is single that, malt I, scotch? I, but I is thought it? you were taking my glass. Did you see me? That that's my glass. Oh my god! It's from Isla, <laughs> which is an island in the Inner Hebrides. Off the coast of the Highlands of Scotland, uh, home to about nine distilleries. That is heavy. It is. It's a cool Tiffany blue <clears throat> or Robin Zig blue, but a uh, Tiffany blue bottle. Um, it's not super. It smells malty, super malty. Oh, that is way malty, yeah. Mm-hmm. Unpeated, single malt, malt scotch. Yeah, there's no peat in this, which normally Islas are peated because there's no wood to stop the malting process with, so it's usually stopped with peat smoke. With so them. what did they, I guess they imported the wood to I do guess. it? Or? Okay. And this, this one is, is unpeated. But, mm-hmm. uh, and also uh, Buna Hobbin is another distillery famous for their unpeated And this is Isla, but 100 proof. This is 50% ABV. Oh, wow. And... Our particular bottle was looks like it came from. It says this is a. It was bottled in 2020, a vatting of 79 different casts, five vintages, three barley types, and ten cast types. Okay, wait a second. So this, you got a code on every bottle of Brooklotic, and you enter the code on their website, and it tells you every cask that that whiskey was drawn from when it was distilled, <laughs> when it was bottled. And so what you, type of cask was used for it and what type of barley was used. So if you hear the squeaking in the background during this podcast, that is Winston. No more squeaky, Winston. No more squeaky. Uh, so how do you... They, will you take that away from him, please? I'll cut that out. But take that away from him. Look, it's a Robinson. I don't care. Take it away. <laughs> Calm down. I am very calm. Just take it away from the dog. We're doing a podcast. So we have a specific. A what? We have a specific. Specific. <laughs> and how much scotch have you had? <laughs> so each one. I'm sorry. Each one has a code, so you get to see oh, what, yeah. how that's they made it. So that's really cool. They yeah. have the distillation year on most it appears to have been 2014. <clears throat> you've got Isla Barley in here that's grown on the island of Isla. You've got Scottish Mainland Organic. You've got uh, Scottish Mainland Non-Organic. You've got a mix of cask of U.S. Bourbon Barrel First Fills. You've got Spanish Sherry Butts. You've got butts. Uh, butts. That's what they call a smaller cask. Um, you've got Chilean Cabernet Sauvignon Hogshead Second Fill Cask. You've got quite a... It's quite a mix. There's quite a mix here. And every uh, batch is unique. They That's say so they, they don't go for 100% consistency. They go for quality over consistency. I can actually tell you what they say. Did you look it up? The foundation for our classic laddie is not a recipe set in stone, but a distilling philosophy. We have no interest in precise uniformity. Instead, year by year, the variety and provenance of our barley shapes our spirit. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool because you get to yeah. taste a different one every time. Yeah, if your batch is different, it could be slightly different flavor. It says, right. in our ever-increasing range of casks are sourced to evolve the variety of flavors in our warehouse. Hmm. And this 
What's the price point on this, John? This is... I'm on it. You're on it, babe. <laughs> this is... Uh, down this I bought this in Little Rock. Sixty six dollars and seventy five cents. Wow. So that's uh, not expensive for Scott. This is the least expensive uh bottle from them. If you want the hundred percent Isla barley, it costs you about eighty dollars. Things go up from there. From they, there, they yeah. They have uh they have one called Black Art. As in the black art and it's got like little pentagrams and stuff on the bottom. Oh, that's cool. It's kinda cool. Be perfect for this show. 395 pound Maybe not sterling, so which much. is about $500. 500. Yeah. Yeah, because this says it's 45 it. pounds online. So $66 in Yeah, store. that's about what it comes out to American. Now. 500 Yeah, Golly. I would love to try a bottle of that, but you know, that's why we buy a lot of tickets, right? That's kind of steep for me. That's why we do podcasts <laughs> with booze. Hopefully, maybe one day. <laughs> All right. All right. Wait, if Wait. we have enough people buy our swag. Then yeah, we could afford it. Sponsorships, yeah. Slancha, slancha. That's good. Ooh, it's a hot one. I like that higher proof. Could we light this on fire and it would turn blue, or not quite? No, it would. At a hundred proof, yeah. You don't like it. The look on that is is burning him. It is burning. The proof is a little too much. Yeah, it's the proof. I'm not used to that hundred proof. Ooh, you can taste that. Is it the Ooh, barley? That is That's smooth. Doubt that is very smooth. I, it's very barley forward. Yeah, the, I can taste the barley for sure. Yeah, I, the malt is very bright in your face. But I don't, I don't hate it. It's just a lot. Is this one that you would normally sit right? This is what it would be used for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All scotch, I suppose. Yeah. Right? I, I wouldn't. I mean, I suppose Johnny Walker is something you might shoot, but <laughs> we could tell you what. That doesn't. That doesn't suck. You are supposed to be taste. Let's just skip nose and all that and go straight to palate. Okay. Refined and refreshing sweet oak and barley notes come together in perfect harmony. Ripe green fruits, brown sugar. And sweet malt follows showcasing the remarkable flavor of the Scottish barley used in a single malt. And it's interesting that you say brown sugar because that is exactly what I tasted yeah. from the Tamdu. Well, I don't get brown sugar from this. Yes. Some of the barley. casts that went in this are sherry mm-hmm. casts, so there's a little bit of that. But and but I don't really get that heavy bourbon influence. It's very malt like malt forward. Yes. <clears throat> Very much. Yeah. Big time. That one's spicy. <laughs> it is. There's some spiciness to it. If you get your bourbon drinker, you should be used to everything being... I mean, bourbon didn't even start to be good until 90 proof. Um, that, But there is some spiciness to that. It's but not that one's just... got a little bit more heat as opposed to like the Jameson that's more of a smooth, not so spicy. The like... spiciness for me is more like Christmas spice. You think so? Like, like anise? Cut... What? It doesn't taste like no, it like, doesn't at all. Like anus, because <laughs> <Anus. laughs> we determined that it's anus Guinness? and not anise. Did you say Guinness or anus? It's anus. Oh, anus. A n i s e. Like we licorice. We determined it's not anise. anise. It's no, anise. no, no, not that kind of spice. Like uh, what you get, like shortbread cookies. They don't have spice goop. A shortbread. You're, th- you're thinking of cookies or uh, mold wine, mold kind of spices thing. like cinnamon. yeah, mulling spices. I also get shortbread cookie in that too. Cardamom. I don't know about the shortbread cookie. <laughs> you do yourself, so funny. <laughs> I'm not about the I definitely get a little shortbready kind of flavor to that. What kind of shortbread are you? A little eating, bit bro? of honey too. A little honey in there. Lip. Okay, so maybe because you influenced me and you. Psychically pushed me on this like side of the table. Like the banana on the tamdu. <laughs> I never got the banana out of the tamdu. I kind of taste the banana on the tamdu. I like this. I do not like this as much as the tamdu. You like sherry bombs. Oh, that that hundred percent sherry casks. Oh, that tamdu was legit. We'll get you. Uh, I think I like Macallan better than this. Really? Mm-hmm. I also there is a little bit of. Salt 
Mm-hmm. There is a, and that's, oh, I do that's get because the salt. Of, that's because of where the where it was the made. warehouse is sitting on the shore of the mm-hmm. of the Irish Sea. So it's getting battered for apparently nine years. So this right here, John. Yes, no, maybe. I like it. You like it? Yeah. I do like it. Yeah. You like it? I don't hate it. Okay. If you told me, hey, we have some of this. You want some? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, I could do this. Let's do it. Um, let's let's be I honest. Think... He he got it because he likes the bottle. I yeah, it is it a pretty bottle. Like the bottle came from <laughs> Tiffany. I mean, it is a pretty bottle. With his bougie. So, um, one of these days, I'm going to hit you guys with a, an Isla that's peated. I, this I'm would excited. not. This would not be my go-to for scotch. I I don't hate it. I don't technically dislike it. I need to get you some. I but I, this would Buna not be my Hobbin. go-to. Some Buna Hobbin Twelve. Buna Hobbin's another Isla distillery that does an unpeated, mm-hmm. and it is a beautiful, beautiful whiskey. We That's need to do a peated. I want to taste a peated. I, I do too. I, in my place right now for scotch, Tamdu is the. That's the pinnacle for me right now. You need to try Lagavulin 16. Yeah. I would That's, like to try Lagavulin. Lagavulin is on the bucket the list. Lagavulin. I've been through many bottles Lagavulin. of Lagavulin 16. And, uh, it's, it is angel's tears. It is God's chosen elixir. Unicorn tears, like we talked about before? No, it's angel's tears. It's angel's tears. tears. <laughs> angel's okay. okay. Yeah, Classe Azul is his unicorn tears. You know, tears. we haven't done Classe Azul, but oh, man. We'll have to do that as well. All righty. Right. What you got? Hear this story. So tell us. What we got is the gray man of Ben McDewey. Or, as you say in Scots Gaelic, I'm fair Lexbor. You do and you'll clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> Which means big gray man. It's often referred to as Scotland's Bigfoot. It's an entity that is said to stalk the summit of Ben McDewey in the Cairngorm Mountains of the Scottish Highlands. Higher. Now, it all kind of started in the year 1890. A respected scientist, explorer, and member of the Royal Geographic Society named John Norman Colley was walking in the Cairngorm Mountains. The area is now a very popular spot with tourists and mountaineers and hikers, but at the time it was very desolate and unexplored. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> As he approached the summit of Ben McDewey, he was enveloped in a thick fog and had an experience so terrifying that he didn't speak of it again for 35 years. But when he did, he recounted his terrifying tale in a speech for the Cairngorm Club in 1925. He said, I was, he's not Scottish, so I won't do that. He was actually English, so I won't do the accent. I was returning from the cairn on the summit. There's a cairn, you know, you know what a cairn is, right? Pile of stones. Like a cairn terrier? Well, it's a pile of stones. Sometimes it's a gray bar. Sometimes it's, you know. Is that where the Cairn Terrier comes from? So this is this like, one is an you're ancient like, Cairn. Uh, like they would use to mark graves? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, okay. Exactly. Okay, so you. there's a Cairn on the summit. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I'll send you a picture. You could put in a, a picture of the Cairn on the summit. Cool. Yeah. I was returning from the Cairn on the summit in a mist when I began to think I heard something else than merely the noise of my own footsteps. Every few steps I heard a crunch and then another crunch as if someone was walking after me, but taking steps three or four times the length of my own. I said to myself, this is all nonsense. I listened and heard it again, but could see nothing in the mist. As I walked on and the eerie crunch, crunch sounded behind me, I was seized with terror and took to my heels, staggering blindly among the boulders for four or five miles, nearly down to Rothamurch's forest. Probably not gonna pronounce that right. Whatever you make of it, I do not know, but there is something very queer about the top of Ben McDewey, and I will not go back there again. Hmm. Now, Kali had a reputation for intelligence and an analytical mind to the extent that a 2013 publication suggested he may have provided some of the inspiration for Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes character. Really? Yeah, because of his reputation, Kali's comments caused a sensation and attracted a great deal of press coverage. Suddenly, other respectable and responsible climbers and hillwalkers started to acknowledge that they, too, had had similar experiences on Ben McDewey, but had not spoken of them because of fear of ridicule. So, this reminds me of 
um, an earlier episode where we we talked about Bray Road Beast, where I forget the guy's name uh, escapes me right now, but he saw this thing and he never spoke of it until he was damn near on his deathbed and right, he, he tells his, his son. Uh, Collie waited thirty five years to come out, right? And you know, and it's just like when you're at a party and somebody gets drunk enough. Uh, because they're not drinking responsibly, of course, and cause we, which is what we always do, and but someone will come out and say, I, you know what, I saw a Bigfoot, you know, or I saw a flying saucer, or whatever, and then because of this one person coming out and saying, I saw this, other people will follow suit and say. Hey, you know what? I never wanted to say anything, but you gave me the courage because you came forward. Now I can tell my right. story. And the same thing with but this most, guy right here. And most people aren't like us. We see something, we're going to tell everybody right away. <laughs> right. Because we don't give a shit. Somebody <laughs> thinks we're crazy. We, we know we are, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't, I mean, we're not respectable enough people to have to worry about our reputation. Um, but so one of the men to come forward was fellow chemist. Kali was a chemist. Mm-hmm. He actually has his own Wikipedia page. You can look this guy up. He's pretty famous. Um, but it was fellow chemist and mountaineer Alexander Callis, who reported his own encounter on Bib McDewey. Searching for crystals on the mountain with his brother, both men noticed a large figure approaching them from the summit of the mountain before disappearing from view. While waiting nervously for it to reappear, both men were seized with a sense of dread and fled down the mountain. <clears throat> so is Ben McDewey is... So I don't know anything about... Ben McDewey is the coach. second highest summit in Scotland after Ben Nevis. Uh, so Ben is a mountain, I'm, I'm It's assuming. about 4,400 4, feet. I no, I'm, I mean, Ben? Ben, yeah. If something is a Ben, yeah. it's a mountain? Yeah. Okay. I, know, I thought it was a person when he first said it. I did, I too. Like, <laughs> I really did. I, I thought it was a person. It's spelled like that. It's spelled it is. Ben, yeah, but. <clears throat> so I was like, oh, this so is a mountain. It's not ben a Ben is equivalent to our mount, yes. mount so-and-so. Right. Like right. we did the last show, we did Mount Hayes. So this would be, be Ben Mount, Hayes. Yeah, Ben Hayes. Or it's another guy's name. Yeah, Ben McDewey. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <coughs> anyway, excuse me. Oh, now I got the foot limp. Um, <laughs> foot limp. Another, another climber. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Oh, the Scottish hello. Did you Did you guys hear that? Okay, go ahead and listen. Scottish hello. Hello. By the way, Karn is a Karn Terrier, just like what Winston looks like. And that's what Toto was on The Wizard of Oz. And it comes, they're a Scottish is Highlands it? dog. I, well, oh. I have a, well, I have, well I that have makes a, sense. I'm a Scotty at home. Yes. Yeah. And a Karn Terrier is, like, looks much like Winston here, or and that's exactly what Toto was in The Wizard of Oz. Neighbor down the street's got one, too. I didn't realize that that was what it yes. came from. Yep. Mm-hmm. When he said it, I was like, wait a second. Sorry, and I digress. So, anyway, another climber, Hugh D. Welsh, which is a fun name to say. Hugh D. Welsh. Hugh D. Welsh <laughs> said that he hiked the summit with his brother in 1904, where throughout the day and night they heard slurring footsteps as if someone was walking through water saturated gravel. Slurring, slurring footsteps? This is, this is a quote. Oh, okay. So I was thinking so, like they were drunk or. It says as if someone was walking through water saturated gravel. Gotcha. Okay. Both felt frequently conscious of something near us, an eerie sense of apprehension. In his uh, 1939 book about climbing in Scotland, Always a Little Further, the title of the book, by Alistair Borthwick, Borthwick, he relayed the accounts of two climbers he knew who had experienced what by then was becoming known as Amphirlech Moor, or Fairless Moor, or the Big Gray Man of Ben McDewey in English, because of its appearance when briefly glimpsed by those who encountered it. The first was alone heading over McDewey for Currer, which is a town with a railway stop. It's a, on a night when the snow had a hard, crisp crust through which his boots broke at every step. He reached the summit and it was a while he was descending the, wait, anyway, he was descending the slopes which fall towards the Larrick, that's Larrick Hill, it's a hill in the Karen Gorn, mm-hmm. that he heard footsteps behind him. Footsteps not in rhythm of his own, but occurring only once for every three steps he took. 
I felt a queer, crinkly feeling. It, by the way, that word meant something different back in a <laughs> hundred years ago. Um, <laughs> I felt a queer, crinkly feeling in the back of my neck. Oh, uh, he told me. But I said to myself, this is silly. There must be a reason for it. So I stopped, and the footsteps stopped. And I sat down and tried to reason it out. I could see nothing. There was a moon about somewhere, but the mist was fairly thick. The only thing I could make of, of it was that when my boots broke through the snow crust, they made a sort of echo, but then every step should have echoed. And not just this regular one in three. Right. I was scared stiff. I got up I wa- and walked on, trying hard not to look behind me. I got down all right. The footsteps stopped a thousand feet above the lyric, and I didn't run. But if anything had so much as said boo behind me, I'd have been down to cur like a streak of lightning. I like you, how you kind of did a little, little I'd have been there. down to cur like a streak of lightning. Hey, like that. that you would, yeah. mate. The second man's experience was roughly similar. He was on McDewey and alone. He heard footsteps. He was climbing in daylight in summer, but so dense was the mist that he was working by compass. Couldn't see that he had to use a compass to make his way. The, the mist was so thick, right? Right. And visibility was also poor as it had been at night. The footsteps he heard were made by something or someone trudging up the fine screes. Screes are broken rock fragments often found at the uh, base of mountains. I am so glad you told me what screes were because I had no idea what screes were. Yeah. Uh, Did you know what screes were? Nope. Nope, she didn't know either. The steps were only a few yards behind him, but exceedingly odd when the mist suddenly cleared and he could see no living thing on the mountain. Then Borthwick himself, who is the one who wrote the book about climbing and mountain climbing in Scotland. Just a little bit further. Yeah. He said, once I was out with a search party on McDewey, and on the way down, after an unsuccessful day, I asked some of the gamekeepers and stalkers who were with us what they thought of it all. They worked on McDewey, so they should know. Had they seen Fairless Moore? Did he exist, or was it just a silly story? They looked at me for a few seconds, and then one said, We well, didn't talk about that. <laughs> I bet they said it just like that, too. I bet it was even less un- you know, comprehensible than that. Mm-hmm. heard a thick Scottish accent before it's you have to really listen yeah an encounter by a man camping close to the top of Ben McDewey in 1940 was recounted to author Richard Frere who later published the book The Big Gray Man of Ben McDewey after setting up camp sometime uh, the man retired to his tent but was troubled by a strange feeling of dread and struggled to get to sleep after a short and uneasy sleep he was awoken sensing movement outside of his tent On peering out, he saw what he described as a large, broad-shouldered, brownish, humanoid creature. Estimated its height at 20 feet. What? What? After circling the camp, the creature disappeared further down the mountain, walking with what the witness called an air of insolent strength. (laughs) I guess if you're you're 20 feet tall, feet tall, swinging a... I'm going to have an air of insolent strength. And so, okay, 20 feet tall. That might be a stretch. Most reports are more closer to 10 to 20. I'm thinking this dude was pissing down his leg, (laughs) scared to death, and he saw this thing that was 10 feet tall out there or 9, 8, 10, whatever. Right. You know, some something akin to what we would consider a big foot. Most reports say more like 10, right? Yeah, so a big foot. He might have a or tendency Sasquatch. to exaggerate. He, if I was, yeah, if I was that scared, I'd be exaggerating too. Or if I were catching fish, I'd lie. <laughs> Just flat out lie. Well, I tell you, in another account from 1943, <laughs> famous mountaineer Alexander <coughs> Tudian claimed that he had actually shot at the creature with his revolver. He had been climbing McDewey when a thick mist descended, so he uh, descended by the Quar. Echican path. Hello. Say that 10 times fast. N- no. He heard footsteps nearby and remembered the account from Professor Colley. He peered cautiously into the mist. A strange shape loomed up and came charging towards him. 
Pulling out his gun, he fired three times and then turned and ran towards Glendary. So he fired three shots at it and then ran away. Okay, so Bim Bim McDewey is a mountain. Mount McDewey. And this is where people see the gray man of Ben McDewey. Right. So is this I'm gonna assume this creature exists. I'm just gonna go from that that point. That this this thing really exists. So you see this guy who waited thirty something years to tell the story. I can't think, I can't believe that if there is a creature out there that it's an isolated creature. No, it would have to be a... It would be a tribe or a group or a, a pack or a herd what do you or whatever. Call it, what do you call a... Uh, I don't know. A, a pod? A I don't know. Is it a Bigfoot guy? Well, I don't, uh, what, what do you, you call a group of apes? Uh, I guess yeah, what, would, is, what are apes? A group of apes. All right, internet, internet woman. A flock? Find, I don't think they're find a flock. for us. <laughs> That's just seagulls. Yeah. Uh, a murder? True. A murder yeah, like crows. crows. It's a troop. A troop. A troop. Okay, troop. so it's a troop of these tall gray. There's a little bit more mystical element to the gray man of Bimmy Dewey than most of your like it, it, here in North America. Bigfoots to. Most of us is just a flesh and blood creature. Anthropological a relic, reason. It's a relic yeah. hominid. Okay. It's a. Did you herniate your right. tongue on that? No, I did not. Anthropological. They're, they're, it, it, all of these always come with a a. Most uh, most accounts are just hearing it, mm-hmm. right? And this overwhelming sense of dread and panic. So have they not? <clears throat> so most people don't see. Most people don't see it, but there've been a couple of people that've seen it. Okay. One guy who says twenty feet tall. Yeah, and uh, but most descriptions say ten. This makes me think of Kandahar. Oh, the Kandahar giant. Yeah. Which I don't. You know, I what don't is know. that? It is a reported uh, seal team. I, I believe they're Green Berets. Actually, was it Green Berets? Green Bray unit reportedly ran into a uh, in the mountains outside of Kandahar, Afghanistan. A giant of Kandahar. Yes. Red headed giant humanoid that came at them, killed one of them with a giant spear. With a spear. And then the rest of them unloaded on him and killed him. And then they were all told to keep quiet. The body was taken away by the authorities, by the, you know, and by the spooks. So the CIA guys took away the body, and they were told to keep their mouth shut. We don't know if it's real or not, but I it's, mean, it's just a rumor that came out of the Afghan war. Yeah, I see. Okay, I'm sorry. I needed to know that because I had never heard you guys say Kand- Kandahar, and I'm like, it's I there. Were, I don't remember where I saw it first, but I, this makes me think of that. When you talk 20 foot tall, I think this is gigantic. A lot of people, I, maybe the guy doesn't know what 20 feet tall is. 20 feet tall is a lot. That's big. Yeah. Well, you think if you stack three guys on top of their each other's shoulders and they're six foot tall, then you're tall. That's what I said. Sound like six foot tall. I mean, they say the you're uh, talking. That's only eighteen feet. If you stack three three grown men, uh, it's huge. Yeah, it's absolutely huge. Yeah, that's three grown men tall. It's more than that. I mean, technically, yeah, because you you lose the height from the head to about the two shoulders. Two meters a man. That's tall. It's a lot. It's as tall as a very large giraffe. Mm -hmm. A very large giraffe is 20 feet tall. So, that's tall. Yeah, I think that if it was actually that tall, it had been seen quite a bit more often than... Yeah, and... Was it a shadow, maybe? Well, we'll get to that. Okay. There is actually a speculation. There is an atmospheric phenomenon. But, uh... Sorry. There is one more thing. So, so from the few I'm descriptions sorry, of people who have actually seen it, it's said to be quite large and broad-shouldered, standing fully erect mm-hmm. and over 10 feet tall. And you, I don't know how that sentence works out. And, but uh, <laughs> 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 with long, waving arms 
He is also described as having an olive complexion or alternatively covered with short brown hair. However, in the majority of cases, the creature is only heard or sensed among the high passes of the mountain. He is most often seen just below the skyline near the Lair Group Pass. Walkers who sense his presence are almost always overwhelmed with a sense of dread or terror. In some cases, the feeling becomes so intense that walkers are drawn to the dangerous cliff edges, almost preparing to throw themselves into the abyss. Some say that he is trying to send climbers over the edge of a precipitous drop at Lurcher's Crag. Lurcher's Crag. Lurcher's Crag. Hello. These descriptions are very similar to reported sightings in North America and the same sensation some people get when they see a Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Now, rationalists, scientists have tried to explain the rare sightings of unfair left boulder by pointing to something called broken specters, Mm -hmm. which is a phenomenon occasionally seen in mountains where a hugely magnified climber's shadow is cast on a lower level of cloud through a particular combination of atmospheric conditions. Okay. Um, However, that does not explain optical illusions doesn't explain the uh, sense of panic and the sounds of footsteps some researchers uh some researchers uncovered other sites where this mountain panic has been recorded three of these are on the isle of Skye, which is also in scotland and other sites have been found at benaki near aberdeen also in scotland and alt innis is also in scotland there are also sites in England and where in Wales where walkers have been overwhelmed with feelings of dread. What is the story um, in in Russia with the kids? I say kids; they were college age students that went up into the oh the Dyatlov Pass, it's, uh, uh, the Dyatlov, Dyatlov yeah. incident, yeah, yeah, it's Dyatlov Pass, they call it, yeah. And where they were overcome, they think they were overcome with just they panicked. They panicked. Yeah. And that sounds like kind of what you're talking about There's here. Am, also I, some speculation am I off here? That they stumbled upon some sort of weapons test and stuff, and they were mm-hmm. murdered by the Soviet been. army. Or, but, or that they were torn apart by a, a Yeti. Yeah, but, I mean, if if we're going with the concept that it's this fear that overtakes him, and you were saying there was something mystical about this, so do you think that, well, well, some people have tried to uh, suggest a sort of mystical link between the gray man and ley lines. Okay. While others believe they're real, they're real 10 foot tall creatures covered in gray fur living somewhere on Ben McDewey. I don't know much about the ley lines thing. Um, it is interesting how some people see it, some people don't. Some people are just overwhelmed with this sense of dread. Uh, I don't know how to explain footsteps by an optical illusion. But you know, things in the old world are a lot more mystical. That's the only word I can think of, you know? Mm -hmm. So I guess my thought would be on this is that that either it's a... There's almost like a ghostly link to it, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Is this the cousin to the Bigfoot, or I don't know? You know that they have their own history of of uh, wild men mm-hmm. in Europe, right. uh, and in, in, even in the British Isles. There's the Woody Woes, as, you would, as it was called in Old English, uh, and in Modern English, it would say Wood Woes. Even in the the story of Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh. Inkadu, Inkadu, yeah, yeah. Was uh, a wild man, you know. But it, England does have its woody woes, and some say and, that Merlin uh, was and gray men and uh, green men, the green mm-hmm. man, which is often depicted as looking just like a what we would say. Oh, it's a Sasquatch. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm ready. Let's get on a plane. Let's go to Scotland. Let's <laughs> right. Let's, let's do find it. Out. And let's try all the different Scots it's there while be we're there. A lot of distillery tours. <laughs> I'm here by for the, it. By the way, the right. closest distillery to Ben McDewey is Tomatin. I haven't tried any of their Scotch before. But. Mm-hmm. So, so here's 
So is it? So is this a cousin to Bigfoot? Is this a spiritual demonic presence? Because it's been only on Ben McDewey, correct? It's not being McDodo next door or McDodo. I don't know the names of the house. What? I don't know the names. So I'm just making one up. I'm just saying whatever mountain is next to you McDewey. Know, the British Isles have lots of stories of many things like this. There's red right. caps, there's which are little goblin fairy things. I mean, we base our podcast. Fairies. We base There's, our podcast off the fact that there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in our philosophies. Right. You know, so, I mean, so yeah. what is there, you know? I don't know. It's only 4,400 foot summit. It's not a, it's not like climbing. Uh, no, that's not that tall. No, it's not like trying to climb Everest or something. No. And a lot of people do it. So you should mm-hmm. just go find out with a, with a FLIR. <laughs> with a fleer, yeah, that way you can see through the mist. That's true. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's tried that. So, okay, which is my next question: Are there any pictures of this thing? Has there ever been a recorded picture of a the gray man of Ben McDewey? I'm going to send you a picture of a couple of tourists posing with him. Posing with him? <laughs> I'm so Insert confused. right here. So wait, 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 wait. A couple of mountain climbers who uh, took a picture with uh, with the gray man. Oh, did they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but every depiction that I can find is a, is a draw. A draw. So I can drive up to Oklahoma to Hotchatown, and which is famous for having Bigfoot sites there or Bigfoot sightings. There. Oh, like a Hevener. And I can go take a picture with Bigfoot <laughs> there. So, or is that what we're saying? Is that what they did? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. So, it's not legit. No. no. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not Not legit. if all these other people are scared. Like, this didn't, it's not. A there, I'll send you that picture. That's pretty funny. Uh, but there are actually uh, everything else that I could find is our artist renditions, drawing. Some people drawing things. Oh my god, that's hilarious! That's a yeti. <laughs> that's absolutely a yeti. I love the fact that they took a picture with him. <laughs> so where did they get this? this I don't know. Great. You know I'm going to post this on the know. on the video because this is but, great. Uh, did you send actually- to Alyssa? <clears throat> oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. A dude in a suit, right? Well, I mean, clearly, yeah, yeah. But there, there are some other famous uh, representations, drawings, some pretty interesting stuff. There, there's one I've been looking at online here that's really spooky looking. I'll put that one up too. But it looks like it looks like an orc or something out of one of those. Oh, I know the. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Gray Man of Ben McDewey by John May. But it looks like it's on that website, and it looks like this thing. So what do you think, John? You've, you've done the research on this. What is it? I think it's interesting. I think the, it's interesting. There's the Karen at the summit, by the way. I, I mean, enough. these are very reputable people. Right, exactly. Very reputable people have seen flying saucers and Bigfoot. Well, and, yeah, but you that's know. all real, so. Right. So you're saying Ben McDewey is not real? No, the opposite. I'm saying I don't. I mean, I can't say for sure, but I, I'm asking you what you think. What's your opinion? I think that there, as as John Colley said, there's something very queer at the top of Ben McDewey. Something Alyssa? happened that said he that made him never set never foot go up back there again. Something scared him. This and is, didn't and he didn't talk about it for thirty five years. Respected scientist and mountaineer, a member of the Royal Geographic Society. Like uh, this is This dude le- was legit, legit scared. This person was terrified by something. He was legit scared. And he didn't even report actually seeing it. Some of these other folks who are also very legit people actually saw something. I'm gonna tell you. Now the twenty foot thing. I think that's a product of fear. Right. So. They imagine. Oh, uh, yeah, agreed. Absolutely. 
You know, oh my god, it was twenty feet tall. No, dude, it was like ten foot. Which it's, is still. But ha- okay, so you and I have talked about this in the past, and Alyssa, you you as well. Yes. We've talked about this about my the thing that scared me when I was a kid was not Frankenstein, Dracula, or the Mummy, which is what we had when we were kids, but it was the werewolf because it stalked you. And this thing is walking behind them, stalking them, but only every third step. You know what it, it kind of reminds me of? Was the poor, is the Port Chatham Harry man? Without the murders. But yeah, I was going to say but without the, the uh, people the terrifying ca- deaths camping and, out and hearing something walking around their tent and, walk, you know, the footsteps. Every third step is interesting to me. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, that's big. Well, that's a big dude. You know, big. Right thing whatever so have you ever been stalked by a person or like, animal or like by a person you yeah like track you mean like, like stalked by an animal like a like a psycho yeah ex? i know you've been no out, not like a psycho ex no like tracked i know you've been out in the woods and i know you've been hunting before have you ever been stalked by anything no tracked no i do the stalking in the stalked. woods but so <laughs> Texas, I mean, no i've right. never been i've never had so, that sense that something's hunting me so I was out in the I was out in the woods one time and I was going to my friend's house and I thought instead of walking the road to his house I would go through the woods right so I started through the woods and I could hear something off to my right I can hear every now and then I just hear some leaves following along yeah. yeah like leaves or twigs or okay so I lived in what I guess roughly would be considered a resort area mm-hmm. on the weekends. Fancy. No, not fancy at all. Because if you lived there, you didn't. Nay. Or you're living at Club you Med. Yeah, you didn't no, make a good living. the exact opposite. The people that live in resort areas don't make good money. It's the people who visit <laughs> that are making the good money. And so anyway, here I was walking across the woods, and I'm hearing this off to my, off to my right. And I finally get to a clearing and I look. So resort areas are notorious for people losing dogs. These dogs become feral or semi-feral, but they're not afraid of humans because they grew up with humans and then they lost their masters at the lake. And now they're you know, they're roaming the woods and catching rabbits and that kind of stuff. So living I'll, their best life. Living the best life. Well, I'm walking and I get to this clearing and I start across it and I look over and there's like three or four dogs that are following along oh, with me. Nope. It's one. I'm okay. Even three one, man. Four, These were, no. it was like three or four dogs. I don't I remember. I mean, what if it was like three or four Winstons? Would you have been terrible? No. Dude, they weren't Winston, so. He's fine. I He's a wee lad. Yeah. But no, they were not Winstons. They were like, one of them was like a moose. shepherd. Yeah. Well, not even like moose. It was like a shepherd of some sort. Moose is a golden doodle for all of this. <laughs> my daughter's <laughs> golden doodle. He's that? about the least scary. Animal yeah, yet. it wasn't like he's moose. Big, but he's this was like this very him. intense shepherd-looking dog, and he's just going and he's looking at me across this field. I'm thinking he's going to eat me if I don't get to. I was going to Tracy's house, my buddy Tracy. If I don't get to Tracy's house, he's going to eat me. Is it a girl Tracy or boy Tracy? It was a boy Tracy, but he was really hot. <laughs> so, uh, Are you picking up a stick at this point, like getting ready to... No, dude, I didn't even have a knife on me. You didn't me. have a knife? Oh, my god! I didn't have nothing. You were breaking a cardinal rule. I'm just rule. walking across the woods to my buddy's house. I mean, we're going to go over there and play... Dungeons and Dragons? No, Atari. <laughs> We, with a single joystick yeah, ga- with oh, a button. Classic. Yeah, the classic. Galaga. I'm old. Space so, Invaders, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go over there and play Atari and... Wow, showing your age. In those days, you would risk uh, being eaten by dogs to go play Atari. I had an Atari, but if I didn't... So you know what it's like. I would have walked through feral dog and Feral dog woods infested to woods to get to an Atari, absolutely. Yeah. Just to go back and forth, Space Invaders, do, 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 with that one little red button. <laughs> but God, that, wasn't Anyone that? Anyone younger than 40 has no idea what we're talking no about. No idea of what we're talking about. I know what Atari is. Oh, no. You, <laughs> unless you've played. My first one was in like know. a Nintendo 64. 
I'm younger than 40, but not by much, unfortunately. We come from the OG gamers meeting, mm-hmm. John no, and I. Pong, pong. Anyway, oh, yeah. what what was the point Just of this? Down. You're saying what it feels like to be stalked? To be stalked. Yes. It's scary. It's absolutely terrifying. Well, you said you had been stalked by a mountain lion, too, at one point. While it I was watching The mountain you. lion did not stalk me. It didn't know I was there. Thank you, God. Oh, shit. Oh, but you saw it. I it's saw it. Dog. I was out there, that and all panther. I had... Yeah, all I had was a 410 shotgun with me. I was rabbit hunting. Yeah, I'd have used it if I had to. Uh, but when do you use it? Because you can't right. use it out there. Nope, it's not you got to wait until he's right up on you. Yeah, you'd have to wait till he's on you. By then, he's... And hope to God you get him. What did you have? Number seven? Loaded in? Uh, no, four. Number four. Okay, you got a little bit bigger around. Well, I mean, we were out there. We would take slugs uh, well, because... 410 slug will do the job. That's a forty five well, caliber bullet. Yeah, 41. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll do the job. But the problem was when we would go out there, I used to... It was an island where the river had been cut through, and so it was like a peninsula, and then the river cut through... And it made a little 600-acre island that I used to hunt on. And I got to the end of it, and there was a mountain lion walking down the... Was this a traditionally colored one, or is this one of those... uh, Yeah, this is traditionally colored, regular fawn-colored, sandy-colored mountain lion walking down. And I guess I was upwind from him because he never even looked at me. Because can you imagine? You're out there with a 410 shotgun. Okay, I had a Mossberg... (laughs) <laughs> Bolt action, three shot, four ten. Oh, I love, never even I seen love how you got real close to the microphone to talk about the size of your gun. It's not very big. <laughs> <doesn't brag> about <laughs> you got real close. You can brag about the uniqueness of that. <laughs> it, Bolt action, four ten. No, it wasn't me. uncommon I'm back then. Actually, gun they were pretty common. My four ten was a Savage Stevens single shot. Yeah. Okay. So you know what I'm talking about? Break action. Break action. Yeah. yeah. Whale, okay. Whale, has a whale mm-hmm. tail. I still have it. Yeah. It has a whale tail on it. Okay. So lost again. <laughs> this was a different whale tail. This was a bolt gun. action 410. You could load it with three. So I had three shots in it. I'd been rabbit hunting, so I had number four shot for rabbit. And I look over to my left, and here's this mountain mm-hmm. lion walking. So, but it never saw me. So, I was if you lucky. ever locked eyes with one of those things, oh my god, I terrifying. would be terrified. I, I've seen a black one that they say do not exist, but they absolutely do. And anybody who spent any time in the woods in East Texas or South Texas or saw one run through my yard. Absolutely, hundred percent real. Parks and Wildlife is lying to you if they say they're not. Um, they're jaguars. That's what they are. They've been we have, ranging uh, back up from Mexico. And, we uh, have the jaguar undy all the time, and especially in South Texas. Uh, that they may find, be what they it was, the models. black jaguar undie. I, I, I can tell you when I was about was a head small? 12 years old. Mm. To me, it looked like the black panther, like on a tattoo I'm going with black jaguar. black panther. But we for have me, them I'm up thinking here. jaguar because it had that curve in the tail, mm-hmm. that long tail. But I walked out of the back porch of my grandparents' house. In? Winona, Texas, or Starville, technically, mm-hmm. which is right east Texas, northeast Texas. Just north of 20. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, I walked outside the back on the back porch. We had uh, my grandpa and I had stuff set up where we could shoot off the back porch. And I stepped out of the bedroom into that back porch and I look out in the field where they grew tomatoes and stuff, you know. And uh, I lock eyes with a big black cat. And I'm not talking about tap out. Tap out. I'm talking about. <laughs> May God something that son. was <laughs> something that was on the minimum 100 pounds and we lock eyes and that's I've never be crazy. been more scared in my life because I knew he's thinking oh that looks delicious <laughs> <laughs> and, <coughs> chicken wings so like I and, like just bound right back inside the house I'm like diddy diddy that's my couple grandpa he's like yeah it. there's a there's a panther outside there's a big black panther and he comes out with the 30-30. Chris is gone then. Marlin 336, 30-30. And uh, it's gone. So, but it, they do exist. So I've my story. They're real. I go outside. I'm living in Troop, Texas, which is south of Tyler. Mm-hmm. And uh, which is East Texas for anybody that doesn't know. It's about halfway between it's Dallas and about Tyler. About the same distance. Well, no, you're pretty close to Troop, actually. We're right now we're we're, very we're, close. we're like five miles no, no. from Troop, but Yeah, but I'm saying it's about halfway between Dallas and Treeport. Right. For Tyler, and then I'm south of that for Troop. 
So anyway, I'm sitting on my where porch. It's the liquor store. Is. Yeah, yeah, right. The liquor store on the corner that you always hear him say. Yeah, when so, I say down the street, we're talking about true. Yeah. So when I walked out, I walked in on my front porch. I sat down. I lit up a cigarette. I'm sitting outside and I fire up a cigarette. Don't smoke children. Bad yes, habit. it's a bad habit. Terrible habit. So I'm sitting here smoking. And I kid you not, the car is parked maybe 15 feet away from the house. We had a little circle drive thing. 15 feet away from the house is a car. Between me and the car runs this black, solid black mm. panther. We for call lack of them a better panthers word. here, but they're both like a jaguar. Yeah, jaguars. Jaguar um, and it runs between me and the car, and it's like like halfway between me and the car. So this thing is like only like seven, eight feet away, and just like that. Or the great southern black cat. Yeah. Because I've, I've heard they're referred to before. The great North American or su- southern black cat. So I know there are things out there that people say, oh, don't exist. But yeah, they do. But you've, have you ever heard them at night? Have you ever been camping out in the river bottom and heard a panther? I've only heard wolves like maybe five or six times in my life. I've never heard a panther scream. A panther and a bobcat, for that matter, sound like a woman being murdered. Yeah, I, for that's a, what I hear. It's the most horrifying, bone chilling sound you've ever heard. I've and never, I have never experienced. You couple that, that sound. Hearing that sound, camping out down in the Sabine River bottom after having seen that big black cat. And then hear them crying at night. It's pretty terrible. I, I slept with that 14 like clutched. Uh, in <laughs> so right here. That island that I used to hunt on since we knew there were cats. Um, I would go rabbit hunting. And this island had some really uh, low spots. So we would, we call them, we call them swampers. The but rabbits. they're. Yeah, they're swamp rat, what we call swamp rabbits. And people look at me like I'm really redneck when I say that. But so a swamp well, rabbit, because we, we are, but a swamp rabbit is a cottontail that's grown larger than normal and the coloration is different. Uh, it doesn't have that fawn kind of gray, gray color. Mm, yeah, it doesn't have that fawn gray color, it has a little darker color. And it's like twice the size of a cottontail, but <clears throat> these um, we go out out there and hunt for them. And we would once we killed a rabbit and dressed it and everything. Killed a rabbit. Killed a killed rabbit. A rabbit. We would we would uh, dust it with salt, you know, rock salt. I say you you bag it up, and we would sleep in the trees at night. We climb a tree, tie off in the tree. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, nope. seriously, we did. Nope. We tie off tonight. in the tree, <laughs> but I would load my uh, shotgun with slugs. So that's how we slept at night. We would we'd stay out there for three, four days at a time catching rabbits. Where did you poop? In the woods. What did you wipe with? What Toilet that? paper. You took Large. it with you. Did you dig a hole? Like- well, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you just asked me that. Well, I, I, you know. You've been in the woods before. You I have, in the woods. but just like overnight. I've never been more than like one night down in the river bottom. It's about all I want. Oh, I need to take you hunting. <laughs> I need to take you hunting. I well, we'll be good, think, friends. <laughs> I don't think I could shoot the rabbit. It's too cute. Have you ever eaten rabbit? No. That's why you can't shoot not. it. That's why you can't I've shoot I've eaten it. squirrel, and it's horrific. It's terrible. Um. Uh, Tastes like rat. I've I, never eaten a rat, well, I've so never I don't eaten know. A rat, but I assume it tastes like squirrel. <laughs> That's because it is a rat. It's a tree rat, and it's still if you it cook is, it. It's a rat. If you cook it with carrots and potatoes in a crock pot, squirrel is mm, is there. I don't remember how my grandmother prepared it that one time, but oh, I hear people that oh my grandpa would get the fried up like scrambled up in eggs y'all stuff, have but. lost me again i'm just i'm just gonna so do you here. i don't know what y'all country folk talking about <laughs> City so have you ever like pan fried squirrel because i've heard of people that's doing probably that. how i ate it was pan fried I okay so i've never 
tried that, but uh, not take that back. I tried probably tried it once. Maybe pan fry anything. The problem with pan frying squirrel is that if you get an old squirrel, you have to get them young. Because if you get an older one, like you know, it's a couple of years old, that thing's going to be tough as boot leather. Oh no! I I think part of it was I was affected by the whole cleaning process because after because I'm the one who shot it and then I had to clean it, and uh, I think that affected the flavor. It could have been. But I can tell you what is fantastic. Actually, I probably shouldn't say it because it's actually a protected species. So you can't eat them anymore. <laughs> but in the 70s, you could. John used to eat bald eagle. I'm just No, 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 no. <laughs> no, maybe it was whooping crane. No. Great horned owl. Great horned owl. <laughs> no, no, no. Those... Mountain lion. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, alligator uh, snapping turtles. Okay. Really? It's delicious. Is it really? Wow, I've never tried. My grandma quarter fry. Okay, like, get so, him out of that shell, quarter them up, snap dust your bones in half. Okay, so Delicious. so that we don't so that we don't go to jail for killing protected well, this animals. This was a long time ago. I doubt they were protected. No, yeah, they were protected Listen, back then, probably. The gray man of Ben McDewey. Real or not well, real? That's what we were talking about. Yeah, we were. We real got or not real? I, I think we just have to go and find out. It's on the bucket list anyway, so I really want to go to Scotland. I it's want so to go beautiful. I want to see some castles. Back to Me the motherland. Too. What are you? The, Irish? Scottish? Scots Irish. I I'm redneck. Like just <laughs> in both poles. So, so some part of my family heritage is Lowland Scott, but then they would have gone with Cromwell's army into Ireland. And uh then in the mid eighteenth century they got tired of the lease laws and uh, requirements to join the Anglican tur- Church, and so they left and came to this country. Gotcha. Uh, most of my family have been in this country since I've part of my family has been here since this was Spain since the 1690s. Oh, okay. But the uh, that's the Spanish side, but the uh, Scots Irish side has been here since like the 1750s. I've always been told right. I was Scottish. We used to go to the gathering of the clans. My grandfather had a kill, I actually got but on I that, don't know about the other side. I actually got on Ancestry.com and cha- traced my back to the 1700s. Have you done 23andMe or anything? I it did. What's it called? Uh, MyFamilyDNA.com, something like that. It was a mm. long time ago. Um, I'm a 100% white dude from the British Isles with a smattering <laughs> of Spanish. But, but, yeah, I need to figure out. I, like I said, my, my, grand, my paternal grandfather was very much into my, that. My and, white DNA is like the royal family of England or <laughs> it's, gotcha. it's that white. <laughs> well, supposedly we are Scottish. I don't know about my mother. She said something my, about German, but I don't know. My mitochondrial has a, some Spanish, a little bit of Mediterranean flair in there, but gotcha. So I think you're right. I think we need to go see it. I think that would be amazing. I would love to go to Scotland, but in the event that we're not going to, and we're not right this moment, how do you feel about it? Yay. Nay. I think something's up there, but I don't know what to say if it's it's if it's some sort of Bigfoot type thing or if this is some sort of uh, spiritual ghostly ghosty thing specter that haunts Paranormal. the mountain. Gotcha. You? But something's up there. I agree. I, I'm I'm concurring so, with him. Considering the Jay Norman Collie is no, it was is not like some kook, right? And know? and so considering and then that was what I was going to say. Considering the fact that. This guy, who is a somebody, he at least from an, on an intellectual level, this dude is nothing to sneeze at, right? And he says, "I, I heard it. It was following me. I knew it was there. And I won't go back. And I won't go back." Now there have been no reports of anybody being killed by one of these. Okay, anything. so there's one place that I won't go back that I've been that was haunted. And I know for a fact that I won't go back because it's legit haunted. Where is and it? And it's really spooky. Huh? Where is it? It's in Kemp. Kemp, oh, Texas. I won't go back to Kemp, period. It, <laughs> you know, dude, I'm telling you. I not go back for many reasons, but it's, one of those is a haunted burnt, house. The house is burnt down, has oh. burnt down since. But I would not go back there. I would not set foot on that land again. It so was that scary. I'll do it. Give me the coordinates. Give me the... So you understand this man's yeah, totally. fear then, is yeah, what you're saying. Absolutely. So what I saw was legit. What he saw, I'm assuming, must be legit. There's a lot of legit people 
have had experiences. I mean, the guy who fired at it. Yeah. Tunian. Mm-hmm. So he guy. actually saw it. He saw it. He saw something and he started shooting at it. Okay. I, th- I, I think it's real. Just like Yeti and just like Bigfoot and, you know, or whatever. I mean. I think there might be a more uh, mystical, spiritual component to this one. Like a ghost uh, my, paranormal type my, thing? The yeah. thing that trips me out is the fact that it's so isolated. It's only on McDewey. Right. What is it about McDewey? Is that just where their clan lives or their troop, as you put it? Well, it could be a lives? clan because it's Scotland. It could be. <laughs> they probably wear kilts, too. No, but I'm saying okay, is, <laughs> you know, is it because it's, they just live on McDewey and they haven't expanded out past that? But, you know, I think there's something to this because this, Collie's initial, he says this happened to him in 1890. He spoke about it in 1925. Bigfoot, Sasquatch. This didn't become a big thing here in the in the in the U.S. People didn't start really talking about it until the 50s, 60s, 70s. So this predates Bigfoot mania in the U.S. Yeah, <clears throat> true. By quite a long time. Good point. You know, people aren't going around looking for. Eight men in 1890. True. Well, I think the consensus is we need to go to Scotland and figure it out ourselves. Now, I'm going to tell you, though, I, I'm not a mountain climber. so I can do 4,400 feet. 4,400 feet? I mean, as long as I don't get in a hurry. I could take my time and get 4,400 feet. I mean, yeah, feet. I could do that, but I'm like, you know, I'm not. What was that, that one that we did in Portland? I'm not like a Mount McKinley Oregon. type person, huh? The one in Oregon, how Mount far? Hood. How far was that? It's more than forty four hundred feet. We were up there. Well, we were looking at Mount Hood. It's no, the not one like that we, we went with the flies. Mount Hood. Uh, the flies. The fl- yeah, that was uh, Mount Hood. Is it Mount Amityville? And, yes. <laughs> Listen. No, uh, <laughs> not Amityville. Um, the Shining. That's where they did the outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The like, we went the to the Stanley Outlook Hotel. Hotel. No, that's in Stanley's Colorado. in Colorado. Yeah, the actual outside that you see is not at the Stanley; it's at the Outlook Hotel in Oregon. Timberline. Timberline Lodge. Lodge. That's where it's actually. That's where they filmed the outside of it. We Mount went there. Hood stands at eleven thousand feet. Yeah, that's quite a bit more for you. We'll have to. Send, uh, we can. Yeah, we attach went To the podcast, the picture of Mount Hood that I took because we were like. I think, I think the highest across. I've been it's is crazy. the top of Pikes Peak in Colorado. I've been to the summit. I've of been that. there too. Yeah. Yes. Um, however, I didn't walk it. All right. So, <laughs> so, I, I so we could we could theoretically we could do this. I'm just saying, like, I'm not like an Everest type folk. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. You put in some pictures of Ben McDewey, and you can see it's 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 uh, it's, really it, cool. it's not a, it's a gradual. I even looked up the crack you were talking about where they were talking about Archer's how they're gonna, crack. Yeah, it's just like a ravine. I really want to go there. Let's All see. right, so. I, I've I think never it's been real. And it's still my favorite place in the world, just because of the annual yearly temperature of it's like fifty something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just say forty fifties. The summer in highs, it's like it's a scalding oh. hot day in the summer if it reaches seventy. Can you imagine hiking in that? That's oh, oh, that'd be yes. amazing. I mean, my back is sweating right now. No. We're in East Texas so in, in, oh, in May. Just, no. It's hot okay. as balls here. It, no, it's not. Send me not to yet. Scotland. So we've explored always the gray man of Ben <laughs> McDewey. We have explored. See, we're talking talking smack because he can't shut us up because it's hunter proof. Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> so what is this? How do you pronounce this? Brookladic. Brookladic. Brookladic, the classic laddie, in a beautiful robin's egg blue yep. uh, container. And it cost you less than anything from Tiffany and Co. And you can still get it. <laughs> That's true. So I am all about this because this is really good. I like it after it would it, let it sit for a while. You're a little slurry. Mm-hmm. I know you've gotten a yeah, it's little top That off. second shot kind of I love tasting that, that, uh, the malt. I love tasting the bark. Mm-hmm. Like that. It's good. I what like do you think it. of Ben McDewey? What he said. What did he say? I forgot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. 
<laughs> obviously somebody saw something. Somebody feels scared. I think I think so the guy's legit. More, I wonder if it's more paranormal than it is actually, like a Bigfoot type. Which I, I think it may be paranormal. Yeah. I think I it's suspected. I think it's paranormal. More, yes. Like I don't think it's anthropological. Spiritual. These are ancient, mysterious. You herniated places. your tongue again. I don't know what the Karen is about at the top of the mountain. I'd like a Karen I don't know Terrier. Who plays I think that'd be cute. There. Winston's like my kid's the best close I'm gonna get. All right, go look us up in all the places. Buy you some Robin's Egg Brew Brooklotic if you like some barley scotch. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. All scotch is barley. Just to be- yeah, I know, but this is very barley forward. Was it my is. point with that? It was very barley very forward. Barley you forward. really taste them all. Go find all us right. on all of the places. <laughs> it for tonight all right night night good night (laughs) bye-bye oh my ears be sweating oh my ears be sweating i gotta talk about squirrels i gotta free squirrels i gotta free the scalp okay free the scalp nothing about no squirrel moanamkara moanamkara i don't know anything about no squirrel meat moanamkara that you can pronounce these things but you can't say brooklata i can't now brooklata (laughs) moanamkara are you lit it's strong. No, no, yeah, lit. you are. No, yeah, I mean, I feel good. I'm not lit. <laughs> I'm hey, I'm John. I'm about to go out and... Look, and, and it's the little gray man of Ben McBlack. <laughs> he looks like... Yeah, he looks like a car carrier. He's a little sweet. gray man of Ben McBlack. Oh. Like Winston name, he sounds great. I no, I mean, I'm not um, laying in the grass throwing balls saying, oh, how pretty the lights are. But no. I'm not like... But you're lit. I'm not sober. I'm talking, oh, my God. You're talking not sober. sober. I don't act like 12, 15 is super late for us. Come on. Uh, Alyssa's not sober. I'm not sober, no. Hmm. I shouldn't be. I just drank a hundred proof. Did you drink all of that? No. I'm still I'm nursing it over here. Oh my god, paid. this is John is my look like a carn tear. It's my second or third? Uh third, I think. I've been watching yeah, it. Yeah, my third. <laughs> I <laughs> my third. <laughs> Why would somebody say that Dream Police is a bad album cover? It's a fantastic album. That's a horrible See, album cover. It. Okay, it's a great album though.